The facades of two of Singapore's most historically significant buildings acted as one giant canvas in celebration of the transformation of the Supreme Court and the City Hall into the much-anticipated National Gallery of Singapore. A bold artistic gesture to shout out the island state's growing cultural credentials and ambitions. The new museum holds the world's largest collection of Southeast Asian art and, at an estimated cost of a quarter of a million pounds, is a reflection of how savvy nations now are to the soft power potential of art. We tell the story of art going back to the 19th century and how uh, the important developments have led to the kind of art that we see now today in Singapore. So in that sense, the uh, relationship between identity nation and art is a complex one. The National Gallery is coming at the right time uh, in Singapore's development during our 50th year of independence. As such, it's also a time for us to consider the role that art has played in our history and the role of art uh, for our society today. Um, you know Singapore has many uh, developments in culture. So the National Gallery, in a sense, is topping all of this off by completing the ecology and uh, creating an ecology that will create and develop our creativity here in Singapore in the region. The National Gallery of Singapore was born out of the Renaissance City Plan, a government initiative to establish Singapore as a global art city, conducive to creative industries. An interesting emphasis is placed on the creative process to readjust Singapore's reputation as not just a dull city for business. Made in Singapore is now recognized as an important brand value and art spaces such as the Tyler Print Institute have residencies to nurture professionals from around the world to encourage a cultural exchange of ideas. Internationally renowned Korean installation artist Do Ho Sa was given the opportunity to use their print and paper making resources to expand on his repertoire of thread drawings. Manpower is really the best resource that this country possesses. So using that, made in Singapore objects or artworks or anything that is made here is kind of considered really a feat. It's very much of a tactile, hands-on type of process, but it still requires people to execute the works. And I think at the end of the day, when the artist, the creator, is actually using their hands to make something, I think they kind of pass more things to the artwork that's being made when that happens. Singapore is developing into an internationally recognized art scene, but the elephant in the room is still the issue of censorship. One can't talk about Singaporean art without addressing censorship. Uh, censorship is a, a, a huge bugbear here, and it has always been. But having said that, most nations uh, have to deal with censorship in some way and that also informs the way that artists create work which can make it very very interesting. They're very individualistic when it comes to the way they present their works but also in the messaging that, and the coding that, that comes through Singaporean art. Chan Bay Galleries opened five years ago to provide a platform for Singapore artists to help take their careers to the next level. They recently opened Shop House 5 a new gallery in Geylang to showcase projects that may not be as commercially viable as those they exhibit in their Raffles Hotel Gallery. This space acts more like an incubator for artistic expression. We could identify as a thread, a kind of poignant kind of discussion on nostalgia. If you look at the recent history of Singapore and the rate of development and and the way that the country has changed. It has created a, a disconnect between the people and, and the country. So this has become a, a ripe area for, for, uh, for discussion amongst artists. Gilman Barracks is a contemporary art cluster consisting of 11 international galleries and the NTU Centre for Contemporary Art. Launched in 2013 with support from Singapore's Economic Development Board, CCA is part of Nanyang Technological University with a mission to foster critical discourse and experimentation through research, exhibitions and residencies. 
One such resident is Singapore artist Wei Sin Chong. Her specialty is in print and fabric, and she's using her time here to explore notions of nature and technology at odds in her world. I definitely feel very much um, um, a digital creature. I see things through our phones, and we don't notice them unless we take a picture of them. And it's a lot about this conflict between, you know, just accepting that you're not a machine. <laughs> Returning to Singapore after studying at the Royal College of Art in London, Wei Sin values the cross-platform investment in a vibrant art scene. It has everything to do with the sense of place and pride. There's a kind of global homogeneity in corporatization and you know, global markets. And there is already so much that is just around us that needs to be unpacked. Because the way you see yourself and where you're based also becomes the way you interact and present yourself you know outside of your country and that that's how value and perceived value grows. For Monocle in Singapore, I'm Gillian Tobias.